Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 29 of my linear algebra tutorial. This is the final part. Everything you will see in regards to linear algebra from now forward will be specific to machine learning. And I wanted to finish off this tutorial series by covering something rather complicated. I'm going to show you how to find eigenvalues as well as eigenvectors with 3D matrices. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to start off with a three-dimensional matrix, and I'm going to need a lot of space to cover all of this. So here is our three-dimensional matrix. All right, so there we go. All right, so the formula we are going to be working with this time is going to be a version of what we covered in part 28, and you should definitely watch part 28 before continuing on here. Otherwise, you may be confused. All right, so we're going to get the determinant of our matrix minus lambda and an identity matrix. And I'm just going to cut to the chase here and go and, and of course you've seen the identity matrix many times. And if we go and work this through, we're going to end up getting the determinant of 1 minus lambda. 6 and negative 1, 2, negative 1 minus lambda, negative 2, 1, 0, negative 1 minus lambda. And now we're going to use yet another formula to figure out how to get the determinant with this. That formula is going to be the determinant of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. And how you find the determinant with this is you take A times the determinant of E, F, H, and I. And if you don't remember why exactly I'm doing it this way, well, we're starting with A and we're going to ignore anything that is in the same row and column. That leaves us with E, F, H, and I. We're then going to subtract B times the determinant. And now ignore everything in the top row, of course, as well as the column that goes down the middle. So that means that we'll have D, F, G, and I. And then we will get plus C times the determinant. And again, ignore everything in the C row and column which leaves us with D, E, G, and H. So there is our formula. Now we just have to plug everything in. So we're going to go 1 minus lambda times the determinant. And this is going to end up being negative 1 minus lambda minus 2, 0, negative 1 minus lambda minus 2, times the determinant of 6, negative 1, negative 1 minus lambda and 0, plus 1 times the determinant of 6, minus 1, minus 1, minus lambda, and negative 2. All right. So this part right here, this specific area right here, is going to end up being 1 minus lambda times negative lambda minus 1 squared. Then we're going to have for the next part, this area right here, minus 2 times 6 minus lambda minus 1 plus, and then the final part, 1 times negative lambda minus 13. All right, so there we got this. Now what I want to do is multiply through all of these. And what does that mean? Well, that means that this part right here is going to become 12. And then we can come in and get rid of this one right here. And get rid of this part right here and this part right here. Grab this little guy, move it over here. Okay. And then this is going to be further simplified to 1 minus lambda. We can convert this into lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 1 minus 
12 negative lambda minus 1 minus lambda minus 13. Getting a little bit complicated here. So what I want to do now is multiply the first two together. And that would give me lambda squared plus 1 times 2 lambda plus 1 times 1 plus negative lambda lambda squared plus negative lambda times 2 lambda plus negative lambda times 1. Okay, it's getting more and more complicated, but we can now simplify this down. And whenever we do, we're going to get lambda cubed minus lambda squared plus lambda plus 1. All right, so that great big giant complicated thing is now much more simplified. Now let's add in the part that we took out previously, which would make this lambda cubed minus lambda squared plus lambda plus 1. And then we're going to put this guy right here back in there. So this becomes plus 12 lambda plus 12 minus lambda minus 13, which ends up being equal to negative lambda cubed minus lambda squared plus 12 lambda. All right, so we got through the hard parts. So what I need to do is factor out our common term from this guy right here. And if I do that, I will get negative lambda lambda squared plus lambda minus 12. And what I want to do now is find the eigenvalues specifically for this. So let's just go and get rid of all this because believe me, I need all of this space. All right. So what I specifically want to do is I want to come in and I want to factor this guy right here. And I'm going to do so using this example. So 4ax squared plus bx plus c. And I want to find the d and e where d times e is equal to a times c and also the d plus e where we get b. So what do we know so far? Well, based off of this, we know that a is equal to 1. We know that b is equal to 1. We know that c is equal to negative 12. And d times e equal to negative 12. And d plus e is equal to 1. So we want to find the factors of 12. So we'll just say factors of 12. And those are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And the factors of negative 12 are going to just be those same exact things, except we're going to have a negative version of them. So this video is basically bringing in a lot of the things we've covered in the past. So what do I want to do here? Well, I want to find for all of these values, I'm looking specifically for a situation where d times e equals negative 12. And then whenever I find that, well, let's write that out. So I'm looking for situations where d times e is equal to negative 12. And if I find that, I also want to find a situation where d plus e is equal to 1. So what do I have to do? I have to go through here and figure out all these factors. So I'm going to have d here. We'll try 1 and e equal to negative 12. So does that fit our what we're looking for? No, that does not. All right, so we'll move on to the next one because 1 plus negative 12 does not equal 1. It equals negative 11. So we'll try 2 and 
negative 6. No, that doesn't work either. So we'll continue on. How about D3 and E negative 4? No, that equals negative uh, 1, but we're getting close. So we'll say D4 and E negative 3. And in that situation, well, I forgot to put the no here. Yes, indeed, this is true. We got the negative 12 that we are looking for, and we found a situation where D plus E does equal 1. So knowing this, we know what? Well, we know that D is equal to 4, and E is equal to negative 3. And if we have ax squared plus dx plus ex plus c, well then we're going to be able to rewrite this as lambda squared minus 3 lambda plus 4 lambda minus 12. And if we factor out our common terms, that is going to give us lambda lambda minus 3 plus 4 lambda minus 3, which is going to become lambda minus 3 and lambda plus 4. And then we need to put our negative lambda back inside of there that we did not, that we took out, that we removed. And that is going to leave us with negative lambda lambda minus 3 lambda plus 4 equal to 0. Now the zero factor principle says to us that if a times b is equal to 0 then we know that a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0 or both equal 0. So if we know that we know that one value for lambda that we definitely know we have is that lambda equals zero. All right, so let's go and let's highlight that. All right, so we have one of our eigenvalues. Well, the other two are easy also. So this one right here tells us that lambda is equal to three, and this one tells us that lambda is equal to negative four. So there you go, we have all three of our eigenvalues based off of these formulas. So zero, three, and negative four. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to find the eigenvector for the situation in which we have lambda equal to zero, and everything I'm gonna show you can be applied to find the other two. All right. So what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to have a formula that is going to be our matrix C minus the lambda value times the identity matrix. All right, so let's go and get our original formula. 1, 2, 1, 6, negative 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1. And this will be, we're using lambda zero, so this is gonna be zero. So guess what happens whenever you subtract zero from a matrix? Well, you end up having zero, all right? So everything stays exactly the same. Now what we need to do is find our reduced row echelon form. And uh, first thing I'm gonna do is replace R1 and R2, because I think that would make it cleaner. So we are going to get six, one, negative one, negative one, 2, negative 2, 0, 1, and 1. Reduce this down. That's going to be R2 minus 1 sixth, the value of R1, and we're going to put that value in R2. And if we do that, well, this doesn't change. This one does, so this is going to become 0. This is going to become 13 over 6, and this is 1. This doesn't change. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 1. Up next, we're going to take our 3 plus 1 sixth of R1, and we're going to put that in R3. And if we do that, let's make this a little bit bigger. Again, this doesn't change. And this becomes 0, 13. 
15 and 6 and 1 and then this one becomes 0 negative 13 6 and negative 1 what are we going to do now well we are going to get our 3 plus our 2 and put that into our 3 and if we do that pretty simple now after we got through the complicated stuff 6 negative 1 0 0 13 over 6 and 1 and this of course gets zeroed out and we continue by taking 6 thirteenths times r2 this stays the same this becomes 0 we got our 1 there 6 thirteenths and of course this doesn't change either and we're in the home stretch let's go and get r1 plus r2 and put that into r1 and if we do that this becomes 6 0 6 over 13 0 1 6 over 13 this remains the same go and get r1 multiply it times 1 6 this is 1 0 0 1 0 0 this is going to be 1 over 13 this is 6 over 13 0 and then this is going to reduce down to x plus 1 over 13 z equal to 0 and y plus 6 over 13 z equal to 0 which further becomes x is equal to negative 1 13 z and y is equal to negative 6 over 13 z and to convert these to whole numbers what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that z is equal to 13 and if I do that what we're going to get is negative 1 over 13 times 13 negative 6 over 13 times 13 and this simply is 13 because we said z is 13 which is going to give us our eigenvector which is going to be negative 1 negative 6 and 13 and there you are and you're going to do exactly the same exact process for situation where lambda is equal to 3 and if you want to know what that eigenvector is just so you can go through and check your homework it is negative 2 negative 3 and 2 and for the situation in which lambda is equal to negative 4 that is going to give us an eigenvector which is negative 1 2 and 1 so there you go Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Really the only way to learn how to do these is just to do a whole bunch of them and memorize the process. But I just wanted to cover a really rather complicated topic rather than just ignoring it and you know forcing you to go try to dig it up on your own. I thought I would at least try to cover it and show you a whole bunch of examples. So there you go. You have completed the linear algebra tutorial if you watched all these videos. So congratulations if you did that. If you did leave me a comment that's pretty awesome and up next we're going to cover time series and we're going to get further and further into machine learning so like always please leave your questions and comments down below otherwise till next time